We're here at Ono Station. West uh, side. On the west side of Ono Station. Mm -hmm. So what do you want us to do? <laughs> so, so Asmi, I, I heard that you were about to install a sensor or you already did that? Uh, we are thinking to do that. So All right. I'm here with Kurikawa uh, Sensei Sound. right now. We just joined us. And if you guys want to do that, we can observe you do that and we can start sure. working. In the sure, let's do that. Let's do that. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so let me let me introduce uh, Kurokawa Sensei. Uh, he, he's a national. He's a professor emeritus at the National Gra <laughs> Graduate Institute. <laughs> Actually, the the scenery is still is still from the fish hatchery. The the camera, I think, needs to be switched. I think. Okay. Yes, um, oh. I will continue. And um, he's uh, also the professor emeritus at the University of Tokyo. He's a medical doctor, and he used to teach at the UCLA. And um, he served the chair of Fukushima Nuclear Accident Independent Investigation Committee for the National uh, Diet of Japan. And he's also the president. He used to serve as the president of the Science Council of Japan. Like, right. Um, too many titles, huh? <laughs> many titles to remember. Crazy. Sorry, I have to look Crazy. That. But yes. Uh, so, uh, Kuroka Sensei, can you tell us about how you get in, started getting involved with SafeCast? Well, SafeCast? Yes. Uh, I guess uh, because I, I have a long time friend with Joy Ito. Mm -hmm. So, that, that was the thing, I guess. Okay. And you're starting doing this thing and also Fukushima issues. And uh, that is the beginning mm -hmm. of our relation. Yeah. Um, so I, you're you're serving as a chair of the Fukushima nuclear accident uh, right. mm -hmm. independent committee and also supporting SafeCast at the same time. How <laughs> how uh, this happened? Yeah, how was it possible and what was your experience like? I guess I think I think when this start, Fukushima started, I think I, I you know everybody just follow follow what the Japanese government is stating and a message and also you can follow what is. Uh, all the press and some of the uh, sort of Twitter's emails from abroad and some experts where we, I have some friends. And obviously there's a disparity of the information given by the government officials and to the, also some of the message from outside with the many nuclear experts. So I begin to see the quite dichotomy of this message, which is misleading sometimes. So I began to work with a pushing Japanese government to develop an independent commission by the parliament or outside of government. Uh, so that I started doing it. It was a thunder. So that's the beginning. Yeah. Actually, I just want to jump yeah. for a moment. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the right side of the screen, there's Joe. Yeah. Oh, and, right. Uh, you know, while we're talking, he's going to install the new uh, oh, so. air monitor sensor that we are uh, ah, working on with Rayozi for the last that's year or two or so. Awesome. That's great. And he's going to install it, and we'll we'll catch up later with them. We're going to talk to them, but it's yeah. also mentioned that it's happening. Wow, right that's now. nice. As we're we're watching, and it will show how easy it is to actually deploy oh. an air sensor. The you know, uh, ten years on, mm -hmm. ten years ago, that's it nice. So much effort yeah. to get that simple step going. Right. But now, it, you know, uh, we can see it. You know, it will take minutes. You know, for anybody to do it. So we'll just let that happen. And back to you, Remy. Thank you. Okay, so you, we talked about your serving as a committee <laughs> of the independent investigation right. for the nuclear accident, uh, Fukushima nuclear accident. Uh, can you tell us about any like key lessons? From well, I guess I think that's the reason I started pushing government and other stakeholders in Japan, because we really have to develop some independent investigation task force anyway, international task force that I insisted. And later on, I think after some, some months, nothing happened at that time. I even I went to see Kansan, which was the prime minister and vice prime minister at that, at that time, Fukuyama-san. Um, but finally, then all of a sudden, I was uh, informed by Shiozaki-san. And uh, I went to diet, diet and they just they decided to have build this thing. And uh, because I was reasonably sort of uh, saying this kind of independent one, uh, so that I think with that news, maybe I'll be asked to serve one of the committee member. But at that time, all the things, there's some, some collusion or something in this f funny thing happening in Japanese institution. Mm -hmm. 
mm. you know, government and TEPCO, all the same. So sufficient evidence suggests it's a very risky business for me <laughs> to accept it, right? <laughs> uh, so that I, I was a bit scared, but when I asked to buy the diet, I think I, they insisted I, I would be the chairman. So I, 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 I told them just I had to give it thought because there's some certain danger, potential danger. Uh, but one, but I think they insisted. I think you have to accept it, otherwise everything go blown up, blown up. So, so I, I started to do it. But I think the principle of that the committee. I think first time just with these ten members. I just first thing I did is just went to Fukushima to see the place. Otherwise, nobody would trust us anyway. So how to run it is another issue. So the principle for me was this entire meeting would be completely open online and with English simultaneous translation so that you can share and everybody can follow this thing. So, so I, I remember meeting you yeah. at that time. <laughs> right. uh, you were writing the report yeah. and uh, you know, Marai Sensei who will be talking uh, after this Mm -hmm. Peter, you have to go and see. And you said, "Yeah, I want to meet you," and <laughs> I uh, and and I met you before, but I never really, you know, right. uh, I never really had, you know, been, in, you know, called for inquiring to the diet. And I went to the diet. Yeah, I saw. And mm -hmm. I brought the Geiger counter in a right, yellow, right. big yellow case, <laughs> and there was a lot of security. And yeah. they, you know, I had and, they, and somebody said, "Yeah, please give us this." this suitcase and I so, gave it to the person and then I went to the metal detector right and, the, and the suitcases went past it they never, <laughs> never <laughs> and then I went to your office and then we, we met and we talked about what we were doing I see because at that time I also I I get a phone call from Joy mm. in Boston and he was worried about the house in the Chiba <laughs> can you find out that was a all right the machine died then safe cast, eh? so oh. that was the beginning. Are, who is, is it? Oh, that's you. Is it some Italian island or something? Oh, the back. Okay, we're still alive? Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're good. So we had a... Oh, so, okay. Uh, security event happened. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so, that's the so that's the beginning <laughs> with Peter. Yeah, everybody can see this. Is, you know, we're doing our ultimate best to be as good as the professionals are. We're going. <laughs> So welcome to Safecast. Right. <laughs> ah, it's much better, right. Well, the citizens are broadcasting and it's called YouTube and, hey, there is Joe. Oh, 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 so that, yeah. So this is working and he, I think he is his home center right now somewhere in, 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 a, in, a, in a, you know, somewhere. And uh, uh, that's happening, so that's cool. Uh, so, 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 Ellie, it's back to you again. And okay. Um, so you, you said there is, you, you felt like there was something going on in the government for dealing with the nuclear accident back then. Um, right. What do you see now, the government? How is it dealing with COVID? After 10 years? Deal, or? Yeah, after 10 <laughs> after years. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, after 10 years, what do you think? How do you evaluate that? Uh, because I cannot say, I think, how the general public perceives is there any significant change after this? in electric sort of power and also nuclear thing. Mm -hmm. So this is really the voices of not by me, but I think the general public is a very important element. And then I think the role of media is coming in. So that is a sort of, <laughs> sort of, I have to say, this is Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody's very quiet, yeah. right? So that is a, one thing I have been really thinking about these days, why? Japan is just like that, <laughs> even after Fukushima, which is a global disaster, right? Yeah. There's more than about 400 nuclear plants in operation in the world, and 50 in Japan, and not much voices and action. So that's so my conclusion always, always say, this is Japan, <laughs> sadly or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> We, we talked in the past about yeah. the, the concept of sontaku. Right, right. <laughs> you got into the Webster Direct uh, the dictionary. Sontaku is, is kind of the, 
<laughs> trying to predict what the management is going right. to decide and right. acting already in, in favor of it so that the management will just follow their, right. their Somehow. advice and in a way it kind of has no there's no real leadership but it moves in and in, 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 you know in, in kind of a in, in fizzy way uh, mm -hmm. and, and so Japanese management has, has, <laughs> has been famous for that for some, for some in some sort of I wanted to to mm. uh, you, you're also today very much involved in in what is happening in terms of how we're reacting to the COVID uh, challenge. And right. Mm. So 10 years ago, when I experienced Fukushima, it was the uncertainty and, and, and fear for the unknown that really mm. was the biggest stress factor in, in a way. You know, mm, right. Even in Tokyo, we had fallout. Right. And the fear for, yes. you know, the fear for your family and right. for your health was very real and we couldn't see it or smell it. Right. And and but that was an experience I think that happened in Japan and in Fukushima. Everybody went through that kind of invisible threat <laughs> right. Uh, experience. Right. And and I went through that. Yeah. And, and a, lo a lot of trust was lost because of that. Right. And even today after 10 years a lot of people still right. feel that the trust is not not restored, right? But that experience was really for the people in Fukushima and mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. And from outside the outside world, mm -hmm. it was how that happened in Japan. But then COVID came last year. <laughs> and again, it's a threat that is invisible. You don't know what it is. But now the whole world got that similar experience. Mm -hmm. okay? So now everybody I talked to, they said, well, you know, that's what, you know, that, that's what we went through. So from, from your perspective, how do you see <laughs> the lessons from Fukushima and the lessons we see in COVID now? What what is your impression? Are we learning, or are we are we making the same mistakes in terms of information, or are we getting getting better at it, or is the technology going to help us more, or are we still big gaps in that? That is a big big question. In fact, I think I share with you. So that is the reason. More recently, more and more, I sort of try to study why Japan has been just like that way. Mm -hmm. And I think there are many hypotheses, or at least if you read when Japan opened up, Iwakura Shisetsudan, you know, what they see and what they implemented in Japan, and that has been very successful in Meiji time, mm -hmm. independent, right? And then going to Pacific War. And then after this World War II, Japan was again very successful in economic terms, mm -hmm. right? So how how I think all the, th all the things happened again, and same thing repeated in a major issue. So that has been my question. Mm -hmm. So I start reading more like my building mindset in Japan, historical perspective, all the thing is one of my issue right now. So I, I quite often talk about it mm -hmm. in, the, in the public or some uh, academics too. So that is another same factor, which is foreign science research output in Japan. You know, this earlier this year, I think Nature's uh, university ranking all the thing uh, and the science output, Japan was number nine. And why is that? And top is a different area of top is com competition between US and China. Mm -hmm. But number two, three is Germany, France, and the UK, right? Which is a less population than Japan. Right. So that is my last question. I, I wrote about it too. So why is it? So that's my question. So that is the same background and mindset category, all Japanese. Mm -hmm. So how this kind of mindset has been built mm -hmm. in the past? That's my inquiry most of the time, which is hard to understand. Right. <laughs> Particularly non-Japanese like you came from sort of modern time of democratic sort of nation. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can go to Asbi for a moment. Yeah, sure. How is it? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, how are you? Good, Sensei. Good to see you. I'm going to get my camera set. Yeah. So we were here at Ono Station. Um, so uh, as maybe you saw, uh, Joe successfully installed the uh, <laughs> AirNote. Um, so it man. took. A, we had to wait a little while because there was some some people around. We wanted to wait until it was less people, but uh, really it was very fast. I think you saw that. And Sasaki-san, uh, they've stopped their video i think they're on their way to ono station as well so you can maybe um take focus off their video but uh sensei um this whole issue of uh, government response and information mm -hmm. um you know the, the ability of a government to give the right information mm -hmm. 
to the public is so important. And we were so surprised to see when coronavirus happened that the same mistakes were being made again and again. Right. Like Fukushima. And not just Japan and other parts of the world, too. Yeah. So um, do you think it's mainly a Japan problem or is this just a tendency of government? Oh. You know is what I mean? A question? Is that a question just asking my thought? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> you know? I guess because so. I think this, this is a human nature. Whatever the sort of your position in your country or community, as you go up the ladder, whatever, you, you have a big responsibility, bigger responsibility. Like yeah. Prime Minister perhaps is the largest responsibility to the nation, largest number of people. But I think this is a human nature. When you fail something, you have to hide it. <laughs> That's a human nature, right? But collectively, this is a matter of governance of institution because we cannot function effectively as a person on, because you have to have some institution or some group and the group, the top of this group has to be more triangle, right? So this could be a chancellor, president, or chairman, or prime minister, whatever have you, that, and president of a university. My recent question is, when this top person, the performance may not be good enough in changing global world, how you can get rid of this person? Mm. It's a matter of governance, right? And just take an example, just think about corporation, you know, public company, right? And even public company, is there any way to just measure, because there's a stock price and all the things, you can metrically, metrics can tell you whether this person, this institution is doing well or not, right? Is there any way to get rid of this person? That is outside world. That is implemented just recently in Japan. How about university? The chancellor. If this chancellor's performance is not good enough, what do you do? And I think over the last maybe two, three decades, most the chancellor of any university in the world, because this is more global world, I admire at least my best bet, my, my uh, Richard Levine of Yale, who served as the chancellor for 20 years. So when I say this, many sort of Japanese economists go, what? But that means there's some mechanism to monitor his performance. And then just, just why don't you just prolong another two years? And that is the reason. So I think that kind of governance of institution is fairly lacking in Japan. That's my argument. So Richard Levin, great. I mean, so he served at 20 years. So yeah. you think there is a lack of like a performance or really governance, good, governance good, of whatever yeah. metric may be. And can I can I also ask? So it's it's a question of leadership. You're highlighting the question of leadership, and I think in a crisis like we saw with Fukushima or in coronavirus, um, it looks like. And we wrote about I wrote about this earlier. Um, leadership is important. Uh, trust is important. Right. But also the capacity. Does the country have the capacity to respond? And my feeling about Japan lately has been governance, the, the leaders often try to conceal the lack of capacity. They, they think, oh, we are not prepared, we don't have capacity, but we have to conceal that. So we'll just say, we'll figure it out later, we'll do something, we'll do something, and then we're in a situation now where I might not get a vaccine until one year from now. Right. right. No, that is the reason, I think at this time, how to govern this institution or whatever that is, I think this hyper-connected world, digital world, you just cannot hide it. If you hide it, once it's exposed one way or another, you lose the trust. So I think transparency is a foundation of trust in this world. And you just cannot hide it even beyond the national borders. So that's my argument, right? So that yeah, is the reason. It's yeah. true. But so that's why why is that so difficult for leaders, governance, um, institutions to understand? Why that, is, is it so hard to be transparent? No, that is a mindset, you know, just quote unquote mindset. That's a sort of Japanese perception. No, so I, I, I tell you, just you know that because you are non-Japanese, but spend some time in Japan, try to understand it. And so, 
<laughs> so that your value, your, your perception is okay, but if you talk about this thing in Japanese sort of established corporate and this and that, you, can you persuade them? This is a sort of mindset in categorically. So that mindset become a keyword in these days because that's a norm for majority of Japanese. So I think you, you are begin to understand Japan and look some, something might look a bit odd, but that is quite natural in the human being. And I just wanted to add yeah. to that point. And what, what I observed in COVID is, is that, you know, every, there's different management styles, there are right. different governments right. and there are different right. results. Right. Right. So, so, so <laughs> well, well, I think that the Daiichi problem shows yeah. right. big weaknesses in the Japanese governance model. COVID showed a lot of weaknesses in a lot of other countries' governance model. I think right. Japan actually did very well, and you're being supporting right. that. Though there were a lot of challenges in the beginning with information, etc. If you look at if you look at the statistics now, Japan and Asian countries have shown much more resilience in dealing with a disaster like this than others. So it's very hard to say what is good or bad. But right. There's, but there's always room for opportunity for improvement. <laughs> right. But I think in this connected world. And many people just following Corona, you know, COVID, right? Because this is a pandemic. So I'm, I'm telling Japanese government and also leaders, now it's fortunately or unfortunately, it's maybe started in China, but it spread out right away to the world. It's a bit become pandemic, and you can, you can follow what leaders of each nation are telling to their people. You can also just what kind of things they are doing individually, and that you can follow this thing, and you pick up a better one anyway. So, and then do you know what happened since COVID? And what is the cause of this? Each day or each month, and for example, U.S. or since COVID, you know, the, the cause of major cause of this, you know, coronary heart disease and all the things, and top is Corona, COVID. All right, UK. Top is Corona. Did you know that? And France is again top of the last perhaps one year because of this is COVID. Japan, very low, maybe 20th. Mm -hmm. And Korea is also about 20th. Mm -hmm. And Philippines, but middle, 10th. Mm -hmm. And how about then? So that may be Asian to Caucasian. But Australia, again, very low. Why is it? So that's a very interesting observation. And Philippines is around 10th mm -hmm. in the middle. I, I'm, I'm from Holland, should, as, yeah. as you know. And in Europe, it's all connected small countries. <laughs> so, but the response can be dramatically different just crossing the border. It's, right. it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Having the same problem happening across the world, having so many different reactions, really shows governance, culture. You know, no, that's all right. The things we're talking about do have a huge impact on how we react to something like that, even though it, the threat is the same, the reactions are very different. I think, and that's what I learned as well in right. Fukushima disaster is it's not just about, about, about you know, the, the, the physical thing that happened. It has a lot to do how we as humans are reacting right. to things and deal with, with tragedies and stuff like that. So, and Corona is, and also Fukushima was the same issue was uh, you are afraid of something invisible, virus or radioactivity, right? So that is the weakness of Japan, in my view. So I think, uh, let's see, oh, somebody in Washington Post wrote about thing. somehow Japanese response quite similar to Fukushima report by me. I think Taiwan, you know, they, they were good at responding yes. because they right. experienced SARS in, you know, like 10 years right. ago, and they apply it really quickly. This and time. also Vietnam, so, also about 20 years, yeah. very small, yeah. and Taiwan, very small, and Thai, and Thai too, very low. Yeah. So Japan could also, you know, if, 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 if the government and learned lessons from Fukushima, they could apply it to COVID currently, but I, I guess it's not. But what you are what you are worried about is something invisible, right? right. Virus yeah. and radi radiation. In the same sense, right? right. It's invisible. In a way. So it, they could apply some <laughs> lessons if they have identified, if they acknowledge some lessons learned, then they could apply it yeah. to the current world. So, but, uh, so I think that is the reason. Any data science or the thing, you can follow this thing, and particularly like COVID. And that become pandemic. So you can follow what each country is doing, at least the first few months. Most impressive speech to the people of your nation was American son. 
right? So everybody knew that. So why don't you do that? But I think that kind of thing, be, people begin to see the difference. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason I'm telling the bureaucrats and saying, just follow all the country and maybe try to make some, you know, copy certain thing. It's not a disgrace because this is a pandemic and just share this issue. What is the best, the better one? Yeah. So yeah, I think that's why you know, safe group like Safecast having right. open data really right, is, right. has a really good impact. Right. Right. You know. I just wanted to add one one thing, Furukawa Sensei, right. on, on the way of talking about you know Asbi's question was very right. important. I think even today, after mm. ten years, you know, also with Morai Sensei, who is going to join right. us later, open data and sharing. <laughs> right. and people, so I feel that we have not made a lot of progress in the mm. world. Right. Uh, for me, COVID showed that the control over information mm -hmm. still seems to be the way how we control the public opinion. And I think in Japan, I see the similar things. People are afraid actually to see the real data. Mm -hmm. like what we're doing today, all we're doing is measuring, driving around, talking to people, etc. You rarely see that on Japanese TV or worldwide TV. Mm -hmm. The opinions are cast before the measurements are taken. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, and I, I think in one of the learnings I have is, is that, that, you know, the other way around sounds so logical. We first measure and then mm -hmm. we form our opinions. Right. And, you know, as you have, you know, led a very long and, and, and and, and exciting life of doing a tremendous amount of things. If you look forward and you say the next generation, well, how, how, how would we start to become more open and how do we take that fear away of the, of the data and how do we say, well, how, let's face it and right. what, you know, how do we get there? No, I think that is the reason in this hyper-connected digital world, hiding certain things is a failure because once it's this, this sort of exposed to a bit greater public, and all of a sudden you lose the credibility and re rebuilding this credibility is a very hard thing to do and because that's a part of your culture, right? So national border, Particularly in Europe, I see just national border is just you know just line, invisible line. But in island nation, maybe much better protected because of Australia. You know, COVID is pretty low, and Philippines is in the middle. But but still, like Thailand and uh, Vietnam, very low. And why is it? I like to know. I think there's going to be many PhDs. Yeah. Out of the profit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is the reason I think both are invisible, but this go beyond national border. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is a great question. So just show the data. And I think there's a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And I like to know. So everybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. so that is always a mindset, not mind. This is a principle of scientific research because you want to know. Right? You, you try yeah. to inquire, mm -hmm. why is it? So that is the principle of scientific research. Okay. So, um, as we do you have any comments? No, you know, <laughs> we've, we've been talking with, you know, right. Kurokawa Sensei for so many years, uh, <laughs> and he's, he really is so perceptive about so many things and also talks to people at a very high level in government and organizations. And it's a very, Kurokawa Sensei's support for us has been very important um, mm -hmm. because of, of, of his networking, et cetera. Um, but Sensei, you know, you have been talking about this, trying to see changes for almost your entire career. <laughs> and you're not a young man anymore. <laughs> you don't have to say how old you are. But, but yeah, but changing a mindset of sort of, for example, it, it very difficult. You know, how, how Italian thinks on French or this and that, that, that is very hard. That's a sort of, uh, not a sort of national, national or education or whatever you do. And that's a part of a heritage. And at least when you are doing very reasonably well in economics or something, and then your, your people be reasonably happy. So I think this mindset is hard to change because you are nurtured. The, because this is a very unique community here because your background is different, education system is different. Mm -hmm. How, what are the sort of priority? Mm -hmm. Now that is the reason when I go to UK and this and that, I argue everybody want to copy at least sort of modern democratic society, which is based on the Europe, right? Uh, but France, you know, they, there's no royal family. Mm -hmm. Why is that? So that's a sort of question I raise, 
because then that is the reason French scholar was very much interested in American democracy, because America was built by sort of somebody left their own country, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And built without royal family. Right. So, 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 so we, we, we got some comments on, on, on sure. YouTube, uh, to I our YouTube to. channel, and, and I think Emmy is going to look at them uh, right now. So uh, also, I, I, I know Junya Madeira, you're on the line, you're from Fukushima, if you want to right. add comment to this discussion, that would be great, or, or uh, just, just chip in and switch on the camera if you're, if you're currently online. Uh, also, Watanabe-san is there from, from Koryama. If, if any of you want to add to the discussion, it's really about you know, how, how we work as societies and what we have learned right. and, and where we can do better. Uh, uh, did you find the comments, uh, Emmy? Yep. Um, I'm not sure so there is a comment, maybe um, Jap Japan is being the Japanese gov governance is being like a, a sontaku, maybe a little <laughs> too much. That's their comment. Uh, why sontaku? The reason, is, you know, no, no, I know that, but I, I, I usually pose the question, you know, once you graduate, let's say college, you know, super better, best college or better college, go to Hitachi, mm -hmm. right? Engineer, whatever you do. After 10 years in Hitachi man, can he move to Sumitomo? No, no, right? No. So how about let's say go to law school and get into somewhere, banker, right? Mitsubishi Bank, working 15 years. He's a great sort of person, a banker. Can he move to Mitsubishi Bank to Sumitomo Bank? Are there any country, reasonable country, who you just cannot do it? Just Japan, mm. so this is Japan, you know? So that means you cannot move laterally with a banker. So I think if you go to somewhere like the Davos meeting or the thing, you know, meet people, just shake hand, and what do you do? And they usually say, I'm a banker. So I ask them, what kind of bank you are there? And you're here and there, and you can see what kind of whatever he might be. But in Japan, you introduce well, who you are, but I'm a Mitsubishi bankman. Why is that? So that, that is conceived, perceived, as a norm in majority of Japanese. Mm -hmm. But because of under that system, Japan has remarked, achieved quite good sort of economic growth and become one of G8. So I think they think this is a norm. But in this global world with hyper-connected world, it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. That's my argument. Mm -hmm. I see that Jim just came online. Jim, you want to check in the discussion? Or? So you cannot move. So you have to say yes mm. to your, your superior. If you always argue, argumentative, you lose. Mm. So that is the reason, that's the secret of India, argumentative India. Mm. That's a good book by Amatya Sen, who is Indian, but become a chancellor of Cambridge, mm. right? Very smart man. So he writes, argumentative Indian. So India always argue, and that is the foundation of democracy. Right. Um, so the next because you have to choose your representative politician. So that is another thing. Uh, because they are talking about two-party democracy, right? 10, 15 years ago. But somehow, in, in Japanese mindset, in general, do you see any two opposing sort of philosophical or political issue in your mind? So why is that? That is only one party then. Why is that? They're talking about two parties. So I always often just ask uh, sort of smart bureaucrats, are there any opposing perception among Japanese at large? Mm -hmm. So that you elect two, you choose two parties. If you don't think about it, then just you have one, one party. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason even corporate something happens, they go to Kasumigaseki asking advice of bureaucracy. Why is that? Usually you go to politician. 
じゃない<笑>だから、そう、ザッハドインマイクエスチョン。So, I think we're, we're about to wrap up. Do we have any other questions or anybody who wants to? Oh, the solution. What should I do? Should we can do as a sort of educational sector,、mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's i、good. I think Murai san invited me to the 20th anniversary of KO's Shonan campus to. Welcome speech at entrance. In, in, in the other country, there's a commencement speech, right? If you're invited to give a commencement speech, that's a great honor,、mm -hmm. right? But in Japan, welcome speech or friend is a great speech.、Mm -hmm. That shows you something too.、Mm -hmm. Once you're in,、right. you can get out four <laughs> years later. So that is a quite different. Perception. Yeah, I, I also think if you look at history, that big disasters are big learning moments、right. for societies. Right. But, All the but, time. But, but, but at the same time, as we're going through some of these disasters with Fukushima, with, with、right. COVID, and、mm -hmm. those other things that happen in other parts of the world, it, it's also in a way, you know, how big should the disaster be for us to actually change our habits? Right. And I, I, you know, I don't, I'm not asking for your answer on that. I just wanted to close <laughs> a little bit with that thought、okay. because. Because Fukushima was that big shock for Japan,、mm. but not much really changed.、Mm. And, 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 and so that brings the fear of do we need bigger impulse or do we need to, to change our, you know, to change our, the, you know, is our educational system or where, or where do we <laughs>、right. bring the, do we need, you know, catastrophe to, to innovate or to do things differently、mm. in a bigger scale and change our political systems or whatever? COVID, Brought us to some of that. But again, I think we're missing the opportunity to really say what went wrong here with this scooting over. Right. That's my personal opinion. But, <laughs> but, but I think there's lost opportunity in a way. I think, I think that, you know, there's, there's disasters are never nice. There's, there's a lot,、right. of, lot of pain. Something else.、Right. But something positive、right. to come out、right. of that, I think,、right. is, is human, this, the human opportunity is to re recoup、okay. and, and, and build. No, that is the reason I think why I, I just, my key message at Shonan Campus, where I said, thing of welcome speech was K was built by Fukuza Yukichi, which is a great man. And that's a fantastic show. But, but now you inherit your heritage. So, what I'm suggesting then at that time was take a leave while you're a college student, take a leave one year, go abroad somewhere, NGO, wandering around. Or some MOU, some university, that's fine. But I think maybe you have, to, you have to speak some English and this and that. But most important thing is while you're a college student, you're an independent person. You are not belonging to any corporate or something, right? So that one year take a leave. Then what happens is you meet different people, all the things, and the magnitude of poverty, poverty is unthinkable in some part of India, all the things, and also Africa, whatever you could do. But common thing for you, To become aware of is the Japan, because that's your country. So, all of a sudden, this is quite different. But you begin to see good t h i n g about Japan, which is very easy to do, even you are in Japan. But once you are abroad as an independent person, you begin to see the weakness of Japan, relative weakness. That is nothing to do with intellectual capacity. Have to have it. So, that's the reason I spent like 15 years. 14 years abroad, that means you are out of the Japanese system.、Mm -hmm. Then you begin to see the weakness of Japan, try to make it better.、Mm -hmm. So that is a nurturing, healthier, patriotic, patriotic feeling, not a narrow nationalism.、Mm -hmm. So、yes. that is the reason you do it. And all of a sudden, Shonan campus, after 10 years, more than 20% of students go abroad somewhere.、Mm -hmm. And there, Murai san and all the faculty are so excited about it.、It's、completely different,、mm -hmm. changing.、Yes. The campus, too. Yeah. Yes. So I told the same thing in to Todai, welcome speech. I was invited.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> They are not doing, but now small number is start doing it right now. Guru k a m s a n s e i thank you so much for coming today.、Yeah. I would also like to thank you on behalf of Safecast and all our volunteers for <laughs>、right. your、Great. relentless support always <laughs> yeah, and inspiring、you. us to, to be like you at your age is all, our, is all what we aspire <laughs> to be. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell the audience how, your age because that's, in, that's inappropriate, but. You are a great inspiration for many, many people, and、thank、I would、you. like to thank you for bringing that energy today again.